Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. McHale's Navy is an American sitcom that stars Ernest Borgnine, and it aired for 138 half-hour episodes over the course of four seasons. It ran from October of 62 to April of 66, all of this on ABC television. The storyline for the show goes that it follows the adventures of the misfit crew of PT-73 during the Second World War. They're one of the best fighting crews in the Navy, but they break regulations when it suits them. Their commander is Lieutenant Commander Quentin McHale, played by Ernest Borgnine, and he's at times as roguish as his crew but he will put his foot down when things have gone too far. They are assigned Executive Officer Ensign Charles Parker, played by Tim Conway, who is by the book, but he's too much of a klutz to command too much respect. They have a houseboy who deserted the Japanese Navy and wears a POW outfit just in case he gets caught so he won't be shot. Their nemesis is Captain Wallace B. Binghamton, played by Joe Flynn, with his aide, Lieutenant Elroy Carpenter, played by Bob Hastings. They're initially stationed in the South Pacific, but they moved to Italy in the last season. The show was filmed in black and white, and it originated with a one-hour drama that was titled Seven Against the Sea, which was broadcast on April 3, 1962, as part of the Alcoa premiere anthology series. The show itself spawned three feature films, one in 1964 called McHale's Navy, a sequel in 1965 titled McHale's Navy Joins the Air Force, and a 1997 sequel remake of the original series. Academy Award-winning dramatic actor Ernest Borgnine first appeared as Quentin McHale in this hour-long shot drama called Seven Against the Sea. And it's considered the pilot for the series, although it's a one-hour-long drama instead of a half-hour situation comedy. And it's starkly different in tone. During an interview at one point, Ernest Borgnine related that he was initially approached by his agent with an offer to star in the pilot but he turned it down. That pilot, originally being a drama, was retooled and turned into a comedy. Not long after Borgnine had turned the role down, a boy showed up on his doorstep selling candy. He told Borgnine that he looked really familiar, but he couldn't place him. You see, he had already won an Oscar for his role in Marty from 1955. He asked the boy, if he knew who played the lead character of Paladin in the TV series Have Gun Will Travel. The boy immediately said Richard Boone. He was likewise immediately able to remember the names of several other TV stars, even though he couldn't remember who Borgnine was. After this boy left, Borgnine called his agent to ask if that Navy pilot was still available. When he said that it was... Borgnine told him to accept it, and so became a part of what would eventually be his signature television series. The vessel that is used for the PT-73 underway shots was a 72-foot Type II Vosper MTB, a British design built under license in the U.S. for export to Russia. The war ended in August of 1945 before the boat, whose real number was PT-694, could be sent to the Soviet Union. This boat was then purchased by billionaire businessman Howard Hughes, and it was used as a chase boat for the one and only flight of his Spruce Goose aircraft. It was then sold to Universal Pictures, as there were few other real PT boats left in existence at the time. 
The shots of the crew aboard the PT-73 were filmed on a full-scale mock-up on a soundstage. Eventually, the original PT-73 was sold to the mayor of Hawthorne, California, and it was converted into a sport fishing boat. It was completely destroyed when it broke loose from its mooring near Santa Barbara and washed up on the beach during a storm. The recurring scene of the submarine exploding after a torpedo hit is actually filmed from Operation Deadlight. The intentional scuttling in the Atlantic by the U.S. Navy of German U-boats after the war. The very first episode that's titled An Ensign for McHale, sets the tone for the entire show. It involves Ensign Parker's assignment to McHale's crew after they already had gone through several ensigns who could not put up with their unmilitary, insubordinate ways. One of these ensigns actually suffers a nervous breakdown. Parker is given a week by the commander to reform the crew or be given the worst assignment possible. At first, the crew treats Parker as badly as they treated the other ensigns. But after McHale sees Parker has integrity, he decides to help him out by having his crew be much more like regular Navy. Now, Claudine Langey is on the show for two episodes. As a matter of fact, her appearance in those two 1963 episodes were her first appearances as an actress. After that, she went on to be a popular actress in a lot of 1960s series, that being 12 O'Clock High, Combat, The Name of the Game, Rat Patrol, Hogan's Heroes, and Alias Smith & Jones. She also appeared many times on The Andy Williams Show because she was married to him at least until 1975. But what makes her stand out more than any actress that was on McHale's Navy was the fact that she was arrested and charged with fatally shooting her boyfriend, who was Olympic skier Vladimir Sobich, at his home in Aspen, Colorado. At her trial, she said that the gun discharged accidentally, while her boyfriend was showing her how it worked. Eventually, the jury convicted her of negligent homicide and sentenced her to pay a small fine and spend 30 days in jail. The critical reaction to this verdict and the sentencing was exacerbated when she subsequently vacationed with her defense attorney, Ronald Austin, who was married at the time. She and Austin later married, and as of 2023, they still live in Aspen, Colorado. Take a look at this terribly funny sitcom from the 60s. It's a real good one. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.